to the music. Let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the brand new OBB Legend, which went live this week. Check it out at obblegend.com. And this is X's in a Row, the series where if you have questions, we've got answers. First question is coming in from J Wade at J Wade 77. We know Mario wants to be a power spread offense. How does that compare to what we've seen from the past few OCs at Miami? Great question. First things first, let's talk about the term spread offense because it's kind of gotten convoluted over the years. Yes, there's different types. There was an air raid style. There's the Chip Kelly Oregon style. You have a, a pro style, NFL styles, and they've all seemed to blend and match at times. I think one of the two biggest differentiations for me from what you saw last year, and we'll go there with Rhett Lashley to this year, first of all, pay attention to how Rhett Lashley typically operated Two-by-two ace gun set, slot receivers are pushed way outside. Now, that's something to pay attention to. And then later on, when the University of Miami is trying to run this ball, yes, they're trying to get doubles at the point of attack, but I'm reminded by a recent interview on the Orange Bowl boys with Coach Alex Mirabal, and he said, if you want physicality, a lot of times you got to get upfield. The more you ask offensive linemen to go horizontal – in his opinion, you lost your physicality and toughness. Is there a time to go horizontal? Sure. But it seems like that was the favorable cog in Rhett Lashley's wheel. Now, let's go over to Michigan. Now, this is new offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis. One of the things you're going to notice is look at the tight condensation of sets, right? This is going to factor a lot for the running game in terms of the wide receivers. They're closer to the ball. So you can have a lot of wide receiver end arounds. You can keep teams guessing that way, but Pay attention to the offensive line here. Do you think they're trying to be physical? Look at them get upfield in a hurry. To coincide with what Coach Alex Maribal just said, less horizontal, more physical, I think that's the thing you're going to see in stark contrast from a year ago. This question's coming in from Matthew Roca at Matthew Roca 5 Twitter online, but he asks, how will we utilize our backfield with the addition of Parrish and Chaney returning Really interested on what Gaddis might do with that three-headed monster. Obviously, Don Chaney is returning from injury. Parrish is a transfer from Ole Miss. I even think there's more than a three-headed monster when you consider the rooster, Thaddeus Franklin, and the incoming freshman, which is a wild card, Citizen Kane, Trevante Citizen. But how will we utilize them? Well, let's go to Gaddis last year, shall we? In this case, I think as pass catchers, I think, in the backfield, you have the option, and what Gaddis is doing right here, which I thoroughly enjoy, he's isolating a mismatch on a strong LB. And when you got a fleet of foot running back coming out of the backfield like this, now watch it. It's just foot speed. And if you can routinely get your fast guys on maybe some of their slower guys, running backs can eat. I can easily see the rooster in a, a pass-catching variety like that, especially when they identify the mismatch. Go a little further into this game. Now, I know this is going to be a running back or a wide receiver that turns around and gets this play, but I think the creativity here. With the running backs here, you're flexing them out in motion. You very easily could have another running back come here into this variety, down to the line of scrimmage for an end around. Man, this play was pretty. I just think with the variation of sets, later on in this game, he's going to use a diamond formation where there's like essentially three running backs back in the backfield. You see some really creativity from offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis, and there's just a couple examples how I think he could use the running backs in the future. This next question is coming in from the OBB chat, and it's OBB legend contributor Max with this great question. Who do you see as the X factor in the defense's success this season? Well, Max, I see the defensive success on the X factor of an entity and a person. The entity, well, go back to a year ago, we had a lot of missed tackles. So the X factor is simply going to be able to make those tackles. Hey, speaking of 26, great news there. University of Miami head coach Mario Crisball now said certain numbers moving forward. Well, you're going to have to earn those numbers, 26 being one of them. But yes, if the University of Miami can correct the missed tackles from a year ago, big plays like this, the explosive ones, maybe they go ahead and not happen at such a high clip. Uh, maybe. Next, I would say the person for me, and let's dial it up, 
is going to be this gentleman right here, the Chuck Bednarik Award watch list for 2022 James Williams. Because when you say X Factor, that's the Swiss Army knife. That's the multiplicative avenue front runner right here. I've seen James Williams in the box. I've seen him in the second level and where the linebackers patrol, and he can most certainly factor as a safety as just somebody with free reign, with range. So if you can clear up the missed tackles, and if you want somebody in particular, I think those two things are the X factors moving forward for new defensive coordinator Kevin Steele's defense. This question's also coming in from the OBB chat, Seaside50 with a great question. Since we have so much depth in the running back and tight end room, how often does Gaddis utilize multiple back or multiple tight end formations, and do you have any favorites that you have seen from him? Well, go back to Michigan. Here could be constitute 12 set personnel. Here's your one running back. Here's a couple tight ends. And yeah, he's going to be physical at the point of the attack. University of Michigan is trying to go ahead and run this game out, and boy, do they ever. Uh, real physical. Here you go. Some kick out blocks. Look, Moses parts the Red Sea, and bang. Now, you go ahead and you're going to see this. Yes, what my favorite is, once again, 12-set personnel. With the abundance of tight ends that we have, here's a couple right off the rip. You have Will Mallory, you have Arroyo, you're going to go ahead and have a freshman wild card in Jaleel Skinner, Khalil Brantley, and then you have Dominic Marmarelli. So you have a plethora of tight ends. Here's a couple of them right here on the field, two of them. 12-set personnel once again, and I love this play. You have one tight end clearing on the side, and now here's one on a nice little delayed kind of screen. This is a mug buster, I call it, when you have a linebacker who's going to kind of read it, and if nobody goes out, he's going to go ahead and crash. In this case, you had some cushion on a safety. That's going to be James Williams. Great play. You asked me what's my favorite. So far, watching Josh Gaddis, he did this a lot a year ago. In terms of running backs, I've seen multiple running backs on the field at the same time. I've seen some diamond formations. In terms of running game kind of a diversification, it is going to uptick versus a year ago and what you were accustomed to with Rhett Lashley. And the OBB Jet is popping today. This question's coming in from Evel. Can Restrepo be as good as Barrios or better? What are their similarities and different strengths? Well, I'll touch on their similarities first because I've had the pleasure and the opportunity to interview both as a member of the Orange Bowl boys. And we'll go to the Braxton Barrios interview first. At that point, I don't think I've ever interviewed somebody so driven and determined before when he was sharing stories of how he was at study hall until like 2 in the morning and, and back on the practice field by 5 in the morning. I'm like, when'd you sleep, my guy? And it wasn't until Xavier Restrepo came along where I was like, I sense the similar vibe. They're both hungry individuals, as you see Xavier right here. Uh, he's getting after it a bit. So similarity speaking, they are both hungry dudes. Now, in terms of the actual can Xavier Restrepo overtake him question, well, coming into the junior year, Braxton Barrios only had 12 receptions. His senior year, that's when he had his meteoric rise. He had 55 receptions for 679 yards and nine touchdowns. And you add a 15.9 healthy return average as a punt returner. So those are some lofty goals from Xavier Restrepo. I think he can get there. I really, really do. In terms of their differences, they're more alike than different. And I know that's going to be commonplace, right? They were both white slot receivers who played for the University of Miami Hurricanes. But I do like Xavier Restrepo's ability to factor in the middle of the field. I think he has the ability to be a little bit more physical and frame, and I think that could pay dividends for him in the future. Fun comparison, and it's going to be fun to watch. This is going to be the last clip of the evening, and it's coming from the OBB chat and a valued member, Sarge. What's up? In your opinion, without an established wide receiver one, how could they schematically overcome the deficit? And can this be done while still allowing TVD to do TVD things? The early reports of drop balls are very concerning to me. You know, any time a drop ball in practice happens, I think a plethora of past emotions are going to overtake most Hurricane fans because we've witnessed drop balls come game day. Now, is that fair to the current wide receivers who are on the roster at the Green Tree? No, not necessarily. You just hope that this can self-correct and auto-correct come game day when it matters. Now, who's going to potentially jump up to become that wide receiver one? Well, here's somebody on the screen, Frank Ladson. Does he do that? 
But if somebody doesn't take that next step, Charleston Rambo, to me, in my opinion, allowed TVD to do TVD things as you insinuated. His ability to win the one-on-one matchup with oftentimes acrobatic catches and to really factor in the one-on-one game, it gave TVD the confidence that anytime he saw it, he could pull the trigger and he would pull the trigger with resounding success. Schematically, you could go ahead and you know, compensate for that while you're trying to navigate a wide receiver one kind of conundrum, and that is the strength of a tight end room. You have a bolstered tight end group. You could feature the 12-set personnel. You could go ahead and attack teams more in the middle of the field in those middle avenues. And the ultimate wild card in terms of letting TVD do TVD things? Well, you have a running game now. I think it's going to uptick when you have the combination of Mario Cristobal, Coach Gaddis, and Coach Mirabal. And then the play-action game starts to pick up, and that allows you know, a wide receiver maybe to get off the blocks, to get off the jam, to get off the rip. So, interesting storyline coming into this season. Who's going to be wide receiver one? I still think you need it. I still think you need it. This is University of Miami. You need to have one of those guys on your roster, preferably two or three, at all times. Other programs have come in and rated that guy year after year after year. Look at the national championship rosters year after year, and you're going to notice somebody from the 305, 561, or 954 on their roster who's a nightmare to cover. University of Miami needs to get back to that if they're going to go ahead and regain the national limelight. I'm your boy, Roe, managing editor for the new OBB legend. Please check us out. Bang.